Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Welcome to my Create an RPG series. In this episode, we will be further working on our AI, making it a little bit more aware of its world by giving it perception through senses. So we do this by opening up our blueprint for our AI character. I'm going to be closing the other tabs to make it a little bit more cleaner to work with. And what we want to do is we want to add a component. We'll type in uh, AI perception and we can keep that name as the component name. Now, for this component, we want to change a few things. First of all, we want to actually set up so that it has the sense of sight. So we'll add a census config over here and we'll choose the site config like so. Uh, opening that up, we want to change some of the parameters on this one. So detection by affiliation, we will click in all the different checkboxes. So we have all of them here. Now that is more or less all we need for the config on the sense. Now we need to set up some functionality for what happens when it registers certain things and how to react to it. So going to our uh, event graph, we can now say, is it on perception? Okay, let's do it this way, I think. Right clicking over here, we can add an event and we can say uh, on perception, Updated. So this will give us all the actors that it's uh, in this frame updated its information for. So we'll go and loop that. And we're going to be keeping this fairly simple, just so you know. So uh, the, the, there won't be too much heavy lifting. We just want a very simple functional AI that can do some simple things for us. Uh, so this is an area that could be vastly improved upon later on if that's important for your game. Uh, anyway, for each of these elements that we're going through here, we can say we want to uh, get actor perception, I believe. There we go. So this one will return our perception data for this specific character. And it will contain an info, which is a structure, which we can break the structure in here we have some uh, perception information among them is the last sensed stimuli and we can loop on this to go through all of those that are available for this character and here you can do things like you can compare against what kind of sense it is and stuff like that if you go um, get sense class yeah that one uh, and here you could check which kind of a uh, sense stimuli that caused this if, if you want to do it however we're gonna be keeping it so simple we will only actually have one sense so this doesn't make a whole lot of sense for us uh, no pun was intended uh, anyway so what we can do instead is we just break the AI stimulus information that we have here and we can uh, check against the if it was successfully sensed or not so we'll just put a branch and hook it up to that information and see did it success successfully um, sense this character that we're currently um, updating for which is the one over here um, yeah and if it does we can say we we have done something um, one of those things could be if we go to our uh, blackboard again we can say we want to have a new key and we can say that it should be of type object and we can say that this is um, player target uh, going into our object here and dropping it down, we can change the object from being not the base class of object, but instead a base class of actor. The reason we do this is because uh, actor allows us to do some more... Um, we, we have some functionality in the behavior tree that is available to actors, not objects. Um, so that's why we're changing it to an actor. Going back to our um, character now for our AI, we can now say, well, if we happen to successfully set, say, send someone, we can update our blackboard. So we need to get our blackboard first, like so. And then we can say, 
on this blackboard update a value. So set value as object and the object will be our player target that we created. So we can drag off from here and say uh, make literal name and we can here type in the name of this key or we can more preferably just copy it from here by pressing F2 uh, and pasting it in like so. So now we have the 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 name of the, the blackboard key here assigned and that's what we're going to be setting when it is true and the value that we're going to be setting here is going to be the the target of our sensed stimuli so we can get it from over here for example so our active perception and let's reroute a little bit so it's easier to read like so so now we're setting the player character to be this and this doesn't need to be more complicated than this for now so we can just test this out um, how we do that is we're going to be first hiding our character so that he doesn't see us to begin with and that also gives us a little bit of time to set up uh, debugging information as well so if we press play now and we press the oh now this depends on your keyboard of course but um it could be the tilde key or it could be the apostrophe key i think it's the apostrophe key yes it says apostrophe in the top left so now we have the, the debug uh, enabled and we can now see uh, behavior trees and ai and stuff like that however we don't see a whole lot here if we walk out here we can see that we don't get any registration information and the reason for that is if we make this smaller we need to have our thir second third person character the ai character to be the one that's selected in our world outline uh, so what i did here is when i'm in uh, game mode over here i can press shift f1 to get into uh, the editor mode and from then I can select over here in our world outliner and in this uh, state now we can see here among other things we can see the blackboard um, information we can see that uh, third person character 167 has been set as our player target and this happens to be the same one we are if you see here I'm hovering over and we can see that that's our identifier if we hover over the other one, we can see that the third person character two is the identifier of this one. And to show that that actually is working, we can do it like this. We can make sure that we get the debug information working correctly to begin with, like so now. We can see that the player target is set to none. I walk out here, he sees us, and we have been set as a target. So now we know that that part is working at least. From here, we might want to actually have some logic that allows us to change now from being a roaming character to an attacking character, the, the AI that is. Uh, so to prep for some of this, we can go to our AI character and say, uh, we want to change how, sorry, not our character, our um, AI controller and say, we want to have some functionality here that changes when we have new targets essentially. Uh, to alleviate or uh, allow this, we will start off by creating a enum. So we'll go to blueprints and enum. And this one we can call e underscore AI state. And we can start off by creating a couple here. So we can say, um, what would be good ones? Uh, let's say, since roaming as our default state, we can say roaming as our first one and attacking, no, not like that, attacking as our other state that we want to go through. Now, with these states, we have an ability to possibly switch on the state to allow us to do different things. Um, but to make this convenient so we can change the state from different places we can create a blueprint interface for us so that we have this switch done easily so going to uh, blueprints 
and uh, blueprint interface. We can call this BPI underscore uh, AI change state. Very clear what it's doing then. The only thing this is going to do is change AI state. Input will be an enumerator of what did I call it? Uh, do, 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 do. AI state, maybe? Yes, that's what I call it. So the enumerator AI state, AI state, and we'll say that this is our new AI state uh, as the name. We will go to our controller. We can close the blueprint interface and we can add this interface now to our controller and say BPI AI change state. We can now implement the interface. We now have a convenient way to change the state for this AI. So what do we want to do? Well, we want to change the, the state, right? But we don't have a variable for it yet. So let's create one and say uh, current AI state. So this will be the state that we're always in. Uh, we'll make it of the type AI, e, e AI state. This is very difficult for me to say. And we can essentially say, whatever is being sent in here, that is going to be our new state. That's all very good. Now we might want to have a different behavior tree now to handle that we're going to be in attacking form. So let's create a new behavior tree. Uh, under artificial intelligence, behavior tree, we can call this one behavior tree attacking. So now we have two different trees. We can open this one up, make sure that it has the same basic uh, blackboard because we can share them among trees if we want to. And what we can do here now is we can say we want to switch on this state. And if we are going for roaming, we want to copy this one. And if we're uh, attacking, we want to change to our baby tree for attacking. So now we have a very convenient way to switch among these. And this means we can also remove this now and instead say uh, change AI state interface call and say roaming as our new state. So when we begin play, we say that that's, our go that's going to be our state to begin with. And if we click play, it should hopefully still be roaming around over here, which it seems to be doing because that's not where it started. So that's all good and fine for now. And I think uh, that might be a good place to leave it for now. So I hope to see you in the next episode. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.